I'm going to give you my recommendations on how to load out your Aegis Vanguard Warden, and we're starting right now. Aegis Combat Assist activated. Systems green. Thank you so much for all the support from patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers that make this possible. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Loadout Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal here, and in this guide, we'll discuss my recommendations for both weapons and components for your Vanguard Warden. Our primary build has a focus on PvP, although I will give my recommendations for PvE as well. My full review of the Vanguard Warden will be coming soon, so make sure you're not one of the 60% of viewers that aren't subscribed. I went live on Twitch just before releasing this guide. Come over and give me your thoughts on the Vanguard Warden and my loadout. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Aegis A3G Vanguard Warden is a long-range military fighter which features extensive forward-mounted weaponry designed to tear through the shields and armor of other spacecrafts. And today, we're going to load it out to do that. I'll also briefly cover stealth. Now that we understand the objective, let's take a look at its components. We'll start with the power plant, the component that gives the other components power. The standard power plants on the Vanguard are the size 2 grade 3 military class maelstroms. Since we have two power plants, we should go for either stealth or request time. Fortunately enough, the Eclipse is best at both. Its grade one, stealth class, has over 5300 max power generation per second and a super quick 1.25 second request time. We will lose a significant amount of max power draw, but we don't need it and will reduce the time it takes to reach that power draw down to just 1.25 seconds. Check out my power plant guide that explains why I made this decision. The Eclipse will set you back around 75,000 Alpha UEC and can be found at these locations. Let's discuss its coolers. These are used to cool our components. The standard coolers on the Vanguard Warden are the size 2 grade 3 military class Arctic coolers. I can't stress this enough. You do not need to upgrade these. However, if you want the absolute best performance that's not worth the cost, I recommend adding cool cores. They are grade 3, industrial class, with a cooling rate of 8,000 kilos per second and a draw request time of 10 seconds. By upgrading these, you are reducing your power up and EMP recovery time by 2.5 seconds and slightly reducing your stealth signature. To find out why upgrading these is solely for EMP recovery or for an explanation on how kilo per second is not a unit of measurement, check out my guide to coolers. One cool core will cost you around 60,000 Alpha UEC and can be found at these locations. Now for its shield generators that protect our ship and these components. The Vanguard Warden stock shield generators are the size 2 grade 3 military class full stop shield generators. To have a good balance between HP pull and regenerate, I'll be adding a couple of FR-76s. They are grade 1, military class, with an HP pull of almost 25,000, a 310 HP per second regen rate, they block a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 0 second damage delay, a 12 second down delay, and a 7.5 second draw request time. This will raise your overall shield pool, regen rate, and lower your regen delay. A win-win. If you'd like more shield pool at a slower regen rate, an honorable mention would be to pair the FR-76 with the Rampart. One FR-76 will set you back around 38,000 Alpha UEC and can be found at these locations. It should be noted that there is a better shield combo in my opinion. Pairing the FR-76 with the Sukaran is great. The Sukaran has 100% ballistic resistance, so it will need to be taken down completely before ballistics can do damage to the hull from that shield generator, or completely if you're fortunate enough to have two. The upside is unparalleled shield pool and pretty good stealth. The downside is a terrible regen rate. However, you can adapt your playstyle. You will just need to ensure that you take your enemy out before your shields go down completely because if they do, that's all she wrote. Unfortunately, if you don't own either a Banu Defender or a Prowler, there's no way to get access to the Sukaran. And lastly, the Quantum Drive that will help you get to the stores that sell these components faster. The standard QT drive on the Vanguard Warden is the size 2 grade 3 military class crossfield. This is another component that does not need to be upgraded. This is the best stock Quantum Drive that you can have. However, if you want to shave 20 seconds off your jump across the system, I would recommend using the XL1. The XL1 is grade 1, military class, has a 260 megameter per second quantum speed, a 24 per megameter fuel requirement, a 1.25 second spool up, and a 22.86 second cool down time. This drive is the fastest size 2 quantum drive and can almost make a round trip from one end of the system to the other. The XL1 will run you almost 95,000 Alpha UEC and can be found at these locations. 
Before we get to weapons, the link to this specific loadout at Urkel.Games can be found via the link in the description. It even tells you the prices and locations on where to find these items in the verse. Also, if you'd like, you can head over to the channel Discord. We have a community of almost 1,500 citizens who like to discuss ships, loadouts, components, weapons, and more. And it's where I store my most up-to-date loadouts. Check the link in the description. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. They will be available on display in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, Desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. Now, let's talk about its stock weapons and my recommendations. Underneath the nose, the Vanguard Warden is equipped with a size 5 hardpoint, with a gimbaled size 4 Revenant Ballistic Gatling mounted. The Revenant does 31 alpha damage times 1300 RPM for a total of 672 DPS and a 3700 meter range. I love this weapon on most ships, and for PvE I do prefer ballistics, however, there aren't any good ballistic weapons in size 5, and I really want that range that they give, so I'll be adding the big ass CF557 Galdarine Laser Repeater. One Galdarine does 264 alpha damage times 225 RPM for a total of 990 DPS and a 4700 meter range. These absolutely shred, and with their range, targets are dead before you even know what you killed. An honorable mention would be Attrition's. I found my TTK was slightly lower with the CF series, but I recommend trying out the Attrition 5s due to its overwhelming love from the community. One Galdarine will run you around 32,000 Alpha UEC and can be found at these locations. Now inside the nose we have four bespoke NVSA laser cannons. One NVSA does 183 alpha damage times 75 RPM for a total of 229 DPS and a 2000 meter range. As I said earlier, I prefer ballistics for PVP and I found the BVRSs work well with the 557s. One BVRS does 61 alpha damage times 290 RPM for a total of 295 DPS and a 2200 meter range. Now, I normally don't mix ammo types, but since the nose guns have half the damage as the big ass under nose gun, you should only be firing them both at the same time while in close range, and through my testing it worked well. An honorable mention would be the GVSRs for PvE. One BVRS will cost you around 9000 alpha UEC and can be found at these locations. Tucked inside the hull we have two bespoke missile racks each with four size 2 missiles. One with four ignite tubes and one with four dominator tubes. The way missiles have been behaving right now, I'd go for the most damage or the quickest lock time. Since this is for PvP, I'd go with the quickest lock time. That would be Rattler 2s. One Rat 2 does 3500 damage, has a 1.26 second lock time, and a 4500 meter lock range. If you prefer more damage, an honorable mention will be Strike Force 2s. Also underneath, we have two MSD 423 missile racks with two Arrestor 3s, but honestly, Stepping up this size missile doesn't give us much more damage, but it does double the range. So instead, I'll add some MSD-442 missile racks and equip them with Rattler tubes. This is great for a lot of reasons. There's only one missile type, so there's no confusion on what you're firing. You have a quick lock time, and Rat tubes temporarily blind your enemy. And now, we have 16 of them. If you'd like to take advantage of the extra range, adding either two Thunderbolt 3s or one Dragon 4 could also be viable options considering countermeasures are currently broken. If you don't have a whopping 538,000 Alpha UEC for this build, I would buy them in the following order. Note, if you don't upgrade the coolers, you can save yourself over 100,000 Alpha UEC. Since the Vanguard series has military grade components, the stock loadout will not limit you in any significant way. The most important things here are the weapons and shields, followed by the stealth power plants. Upgrading any more is not a requirement. Let's talk briefly about stealth. While a full stealth build in a vanguard will not allow you to attack outside of your detection range, it can give your enemies less time to prepare for an attack if you're PvP. So here's how I'd load it out. I'll keep the Eclipse power plants from the main build, throw on the industrial grade 3 cool core coolers, add two stealth grade 1 umbra shield generators unless you have super arms, and you can pick whatever QT drive you prefer. I think that's pretty simple. Now for the weapons, it's less cut and dry. For stealth, I prefer long range ballistic weapons. They penetrate shields and most importantly, they don't announce your location to the rest of the verse. Unfortunately, once again, there aren't any size 5 weapons that fit this description. The deadbolts appear to have an overheat buff, so we'll be gimbaled once again. 
We'll add back the stock revenant under the nose and keep the BVRSs in the nose. As for the turret, the mass drivers I recommended before will be fine. Now, let's take a look at those stealth stats. Your IR in the Vanguard Warden after 30 minutes of flying around is around 7,500 with this stealth build. So depending on your opposition's radar, your detection range is between 3750 and 5625. If you're not using Afterburn, you are free to fly around at any speed while firing without raising your IR significantly. But if you use Afterburner, that goes right out of the window. This includes Space Break, so only use it if you're in trouble and need to bug out. I don't see myself using this stealth build much, but it can be fun to try out. I hope you enjoyed my loadout guide for the Warden. I'd love to hear about yours in the comments. My full review of the Aegis Vanguard Warden will be coming shortly, so make sure you're subscribed and have the bell clicked. I went live on Twitch just before releasing this video, so come and hang out. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime gaming subscriptions and sending out the UEC in the verse, to sub club subscriptions, merch, to straight up donations. Head over to subliminalschannel.tv to learn how. Your support makes this channel possible. If not, your viewership, liking, and subscribing is greatly appreciated. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like. Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like. And until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.